the first rule of being Kurt Vonnegut's friend is to not ask him why he's looking so morose. <laughs> I think if anybody ever did, that would be the end of the friendship. Because he did. He looked really morose sometimes. And, uh, but most of the time, he was, there was this kind of wonderfully mad twinkle in his eye. And he had some very, I, I can't quote them because they're pure Vonnegut, you know, wonderful, brief, succinct comments on life, love, politics, uh, man's stupidity, um, and his nobility. So he, you know, he was a great observer, Kurt. Um, he was a great observer, and he always, he, he found it impossible not to write about those observations. So there was a kind of chain letters that he would send out just commenting on stuff. Um, usually the, the stupidity of the politicians, um, the um, easy way that old men love to go to war with young men fighting the wars. And he was very, as you know, he was, that was, he was passionate about that. Passionate about being anti-war. Um, and at the same time, I think, was sensible enough to realize that you sometimes can't avoid it. His relationship with in, in Indianapolis was, I guess, ambivalent is the word. Uh, Kurt was a New, had become a New Yorker, uh, you know, true blue. But he never, ever lost that uh, connection. Um, and... Uh, I think it was to some extent, I wouldn't call it a love-hate relationship. It was a nostalgic and questioning relationship. But it had this um, affection and realization that you can never lose, you can never slough off your roots. Um, and he didn't try to. I don't think he tried to at all. And I think he felt, in a certain way, really nostalgic about uh, life there. And very proud of his family's roots there. Uh, you know, Kurt was not a boaster at all. You know, none of that braggadocio stuff um, about his writing, about his war record, about any of that stuff. But he was, he was a booster. He was proud of his, Indi of, of his Indianapolis roots, very much. And uh, I think he kind of liked the idea of being himself a, uh, maybe a bit of an act sometimes about being a hick from Indianapolis, you know, uh, in awe of all these giant brains and great talents and all that crap about New York. I think that, that having a library is exactly the kind of, of honor he would be really proud of. I really do. He was a great reader. He loved to read. He always was at, you know, grilling me about what I was reading. Uh, and I think uh, as, I, as I said, I think he, he regarded uh, literature and the arts as the real conceivable salvation, uh, that it makes us better people, that it makes us more civil. Um, and and uh, he was always intrigued by ideas, uh, intrigued by other people's ideas, maybe appalled by some of his other people's ideas as well. but. Uh, very much um, um, I guess you would say a man of letters, certainly, maybe the most certainly the most important man of letters that I've ever had any kind of contact with. Um, he really believed that that the arts could change us, make us better, uh, whether it was the 
literary arts, music, and certainly the visual arts. I missed the phone calls. Kurt was, <laughs> his phone calls were something. He, he'd call me after 60 minutes off and calling up. So it's 7, 10 on Sunday, or 8, 10 on Sunday night. And uh, he, he would, <laughs> phone would ring, I'd pick it up. He'd say, it's Kurt. It was terrific. He'd hang up. <laughs> so I'd call back. He said, what do you want? I just wanted to, I wanted to hear more. Come on. He said, that's all I have to say. <laughs> he could be really taciturn in that way. Anyway, you know, it wasn't that. He just was, all he wanted to do was say what he wanted to say and get the hell out of that, off that line. Uh, so he did that a lot. That was, it was really funny when he did it, because he sounded angry. He would sound angry. Like, of course he wasn't angry. He just didn't want to have a long, boring conversation with me. <laughs> and, you know, and he was just about the most decent man I've ever known. Um, and, uh, and a remarkably talented artist in all his art.